And I'm just honored to be in these historic walls of the Atlanta Voice to be able to talk to you about my vision to be your next Georgia Labor Commissioner. Thank you, Atlanta Voice, and thank you to the citizens of this great state of Georgia. Uh, first, I would like to say that I'm born, raised in Atlanta, uh, so I'm a Georgia boy thick and through. Uh, currently, I represent Georgia House District 62, which encompasses portions of South Fulton, East Point where I stay, College Park, City of South Fulton, Union City, also Douglas County, and, and also the City of Douglasville. Uh, I'm running for Georgia Labor Commissioner, and I'm running for Georgia Labor Commissioner because I want to put Georgia workers first. Uh, we all saw during the pandemic, we had loved ones who lost their jobs to no fault of their own, church members, uh, friends, uh, sorority sisters, fraternity brothers, neighbors, and the Department of Labor and Labor Commissioner Mark Butler was absent. Uh, under his administration, we had seniors having to make the determination on whether they were gonna pay for their medical prescription or whether they're gonna try to pay for their rent or some other necessity bill that they may have to pay. And that should not be something our seniors have to make the determination because the Department of Labor did not get their unemployment benefits to them in their check in a timely manner. Also, I talked to citizens and constituents that were contemplating suicide uh, because they could not get their unemployment check in a timely manner. So uh, as the next Labor Commissioner, I look to change all of that and I look to make the Department of Labor uh, accessible again. We're gonna open all the doors to the Department of Labor. If you call the Department of Labor, you will talk to a live human being because we're gonna set up a call center. If you email the Department of Labor, you will get an email back. And if you go and pull on the doors to the Department of Labor, the doors will be open to all Georgia citizens across the state and all four corners of this state. If you are fortunate to become the next Labor Commissioner, what three issues are you seeking to tackle? Well, the first issue, that's a great question, accessibility. Uh, like I stated before, the Department of Labor has not been very accessible to the citizens of this state. And it started even before the pandemic, but the pandemic man magnified things uh, almost tenfold. So I wanna make sure that any Georgia worker across this state, if they lose their job to no fault at all, they can walk into the Georgia Department of Labor and they can actually get the resources that are provided by the state of Georgia and also the United States of America. A lot of the resources through the Department of Labor come from, come from the U.S. Department uh, or the Secretary of the U.S. Uh, Department of Labor. So we want to make sure those uh, resources are there. But also we need to have more career centers throughout the state of Georgia. Right now when CEO Michael Thurman was the last labor commissioner uh, that I said he did a tremendous job in that seat. When he left the office in 2010, we had over 80 career centers that serve as, I would say, satellite offices for the Department of Labor. They are one-stop shops. Now we only have 41. We had over 4,000 employees in 2010, and now we only have 1,100. So this Department of Labor was not set up for day-to-day -day operations, much less a global pandemic or economic recession like we saw in 2008 and 2009. Uh, under that administration, under CEO Michael Thurman, who's now the CEO of DeKalb County, it was no excuses made, and every individual that filed for unemployment benefits received their benefits in a timely manner. And so that's what we will look to get back to with the Georgia Department of Labor, and I'm gonna do that as the next Labor Commissioner. Also, another very important issue is apprenticeship opportunities. I want to make sure that our young people can get learn as you earn opportunities so they can have a living wage paying job once they leave high school, college. Right now, you have opportunities for 10th graders to get a trade in high school that they could take that occupation, that vocation, that trade or that craft 
with them. And once they graduate from high school, if they choose not to go to, to a traditional four year institution, they could go to Atlanta Air Tech Technical College. They could go to another technical college in the state of Georgia, or they can go right into the workforce and they will have a liberal wage paying job where they can take care of them, themselves, their family, and their loved ones. Right now, that is not being utilized. We have with APS, Atlanta Public School System has their, uh, their Atlanta APS Career Academy, or and well, the official title is uh, APS College and Career Academy, that does wonders where a student in 10th grade, as early 10th grade, can get a trade uh, in 14 different crafts, trades, or vocation. Also, I come from, and I graduated from Banneker High School, and attached to my high school, we have the South Fulton Center. Uh, which is a career academy as well through Fordham County School System. And again, you could get training in the area of construction, uh, AV, HVAC, uh, cybersecurity. These are liberal wage pan opportunities for our young people. And also there are opportunities for our uh, seniors, our returning veterans, or also our returning citizens from incarceration where they can get training in a vocational trade. Right now, we have a shortage of CDL drivers in the state of Georgia and throughout this country. We can change that here in the state of Georgia by providing those CDL licenses to our returning veterans, to our returning citizens from incarceration, or anyone that wants to train and retrain the opportunity. How do you think the state of Georgia compares amongst other states regarding support for unemployed people and their families? Not good at all. And I would say it's not the state of Georgia, it is the Commissioner of Labor, Mark Butler's administration. Traditionally before uh, Commissioner Mark Bla Baker was elected to the office in 2010, we had a tradition in the state of the, the Department of Labor taking care of the needs of any Georgia worker who lost their job to no fault at all, because this is a safety net. But under this administration, it just has not happened. And so we could do a lot better as a state. The resources is there. You just have to have a labor commission that, ha that has the want, desire, and the vision to get it done. And so I want to bring empathy back to the Department of Labor. I want to bring a sense of fighting for our Georgia workers back to the Department of Labor. I want to make sure that a citizen who lose their job to no fault at all know that they have a support system with the Department of Labor to help them to get back on their feet, but also if they want that training or retraining opportunity to get a liberal wage paying job, the Department of Labor will be there for them in that capacity as well. The COVID-19 pandemic, as you know, yeah. has has shaken everybody up. Yes. No matter what side of the aisle you are, no yeah. matter what zip code you live in, everybody has had to deal with it. Um, what stories have you come across or what people, what are people telling you as you've been coming across as you're on your campaign trail? Yeah. How have you been? What have they told you? What's the voices like on the ground? What is what are they feeling? What are they telling you in the community? What I hear is, first of all, they want a Department of Labor that's going to be there for them. That's what I hear more than anything. Uh, anytime I ask the question in a public setting or at a forum or at a meeting greet, no matter what region of the state I'm in, if I ask, have you or anyone in here experienced uh, a job loss due to no fault of your own during the pandemic, raise your hand. And I will get someone raising their hand. Most of the people in the room are going to raise their hand. It's going to be a church member. It's going to be themselves, their neighbors, their cousin, their aunt, their loved one. Somebody lost their job that they know person or themselves to uh, their job during the pandemic to no fault at all. It was not their fault. They lost their job because of the pandemic. And so the stories that I hear is that Representative William Bodie, I don't understand why no one picked up the phone when the Department of Labor, at the Department of Labor, when I called. How can a governmental agency just shut down for two years during a global pandemic and not respond to its citizens? 
What are you going to do to change that? How are you going to make it better? How can you help the Georgians that still need help that never got the unemployment benefits two years later? And so I answer those questions. And first, I tell them again, we're going to be accessible. And as next labor commissioner, also I wanted to uh, develop and put together a task force to go through and look at all the files. I want to look at all the appeals that are still outstanding over two years later. I want to look at all the unemployment uh, claims that were filed initially that have not been fully processed. And I'm going to create a, pro a task force to make sure we analyze each one of those claims, each one of those files, to make sure if a Georgia citizen qualified for unemployment benefits that they get the money due to them. It's only fair, it's only right. And so the task force is gonna be a very important part of my administration, and I look to get that up and running within the first 100 days of my administration. How can someone support you and your campaign? That's a great question. First of all, we're moving across the state. Uh, I was in Augusta last night uh, for an amazing television interview. We'll be in South Georgia on Saturday, on Sunday. We'll be in Metro Atlanta on uh, Saturday. The way you can keep up with us is www.bodyforga.com. Uh, also, to keep up with us in real time is on social media. Uh, we are on every so social media platform, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, you can follow us at our social media handle, Bodie for GA, uh, at Twitter, Instagram, and also uh, Facebook. Uh, also, you can just email us. You can always email us at info for bodygacom Again, that's info for uh, That's probably the best ways to reach out to us. And also, uh, anytime that I'm moving across the state, uh, we make sure that we're accessible to everyone. I mean, we do meet and greets, so feel free to come up and just shake my hand, speak, because I love to hear uh, from the citizens of this state, and I love to get that, that uh, input. I love to get what needs to be done. I love to get critiques of the Department of Labor. I love to get questions about my vision for the Department of Labor. So I'm very approachable, uh, and I love to hear from people. And I love the citizens of the state, and I love Georgia because I'm from here, <laughs> born and raised. Absolutely. It's my last question. I'll get yeah. you out of here on this. Um, I cover the state legislature. As yes, you, you know, do. you served in the yes. legislature. Simple question. How well do you work with people that you disagree with? I think I work very well uh, with people I disagree with. I work very well, I would say, across the aisle. Uh, I can work with Republicans and Democrats. Uh, in my tenure in the Georgia General Assembly, I've been serving since 2017, elected in 2016. I passed over 27 bills as a Democrat in the Georgia House of Representatives. I've served in leadership as a House Democratic Whip uh, or the House Minority Whip. Now, I was elected to that position as a freshman. And uh, I was responsible for 75 Democrats in the Georgia House of Representatives. Uh, those 27 bills that I passed, the one that's near and dear to me, two that are near and dear to me, uh, is HB 479, which is the Ahmaud Arbery Citizens Arrest Repeal legislation, which passed last May. And I was very proud to be a sponsor, a co-sponsor, and lead uh, co-author of the legislation with my dear friend, the late, great Marissa Dotson of the Southern Center for Human Rights. Uh, also, uh, this great <laughs> publication, Atlanta Voice, uh, got a, 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 I would say, a iconic picture of me and other uh, legislators and leaders in the Georgia General Assembly when the hate crime bill passed uh, back June of 2020. Uh, I was very happy to help shepherd that legislation uh, through the House and through uh, the Senate and onto the governor's desk, desk. So I feel really good about being able to work with uh, Republicans and Democrats in the Georgia House of Representatives and in the Georgia Senate, and also, of course, with our governor, lieutenant governor, to make sure we push uh, good policy for Georgia workers uh, as my uh, uh, tenure as the next uh, Georgia Labor Commissioner starts next January. Thank you so much for stopping by today. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you, Atlanta Voice, for having me. And it's just an honor to be able to 
uh, interview with such an iconic and historic publication here in Atlanta and also in the southern region of this country. So thank you, Atlanta Voice, for having me. And thank you for all that you do at the Gold Dome and for the citizens of the city and state.